SQL is a language that has been developed specifically for querying and manipulating data and database systems. Its facilities reflect this fact, for example, it is very good for querying and altering sets of database records collectively in one statement. This is known as set-level processing. But on the other hand, it lacks some features commonly found in general programming languages, such as loop and if-then-else statements. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and indeed, it does have a structure and is good for writing queries. However, it is structured rather differently to most traditional programming languages, and it can be used to update information as well as for writing queries. SQL as supported in Oracle and in many other database systems is provided via a command line interface. SQL statements are written as straight text from a command line prompt. For example, the following SQL statement is a query that will list the names of departments from a database table called department. SQL select department name from department. The language consists of three major components. DDL, data definition language, to define the way in which data is stored. DML, data manipulation language, to allow retrieval, insertion of data, etc. This is sometimes called the query language. DCL, data control language, to define activities that do not fit with the other two activities. The query language, DML is very flexible in that it can be used to express quite complicated queries, sometimes very concisely. As you work through the SQL units in this module you will build up experience and knowledge of the kinds of queries that are straightforward to write in SQL. The data manipulation language DML of SQL allows the insertion, update, and removal of rows stored in relational tables. As mentioned above, numbers of rows can be altered in any one statement, and so DML is a very powerful tool. The data definition language, DDL is used to create, change the structure, or remove whole tables and other relational structures. So whereas you would use the insert statement of the DML to insert new rows into an existing table, you would use the DDL create table statement to establish a new table in the first place. The data control language, DCL define activities that are not in the categories of those for the DDL and DML, such as granting privileges to users and defining when proposed changes to a databases should be irrevocably made. The example company database. Throughout this and the succeeding units on SQL, we are going to use a standard pair of tables and set of data on which to write SQL statements. This standard data set comprises the table's employee and department. The structure of each is first described, then the example records for each are presented. The employee table stores records about company employees. This table defines and contains the values for the attributes. Employee number is a unique employee number. It is the primary key of the employee table. Employee name stores the employee's name. The job attribute stores the name of the job the employee does. The hired date column stores the date on which the employee joined the company. The MGR attribute contains the employee number of the employee who manages that employee. If the employee has no manager, then the MGR column for that employee is left set to null. The salary column contains the details of employee salaries. The commission attribute stores values of commission paid to employees. Not all employees receive commission, in which case the commission field is set to null. The department number column stores the department number of the department in which each employee is based. This data item acts a foreign key, linking the employee details stored in the employee table with the details of departments in which employees work, which are stored in the department table. The department table stores records about the different departments that employees work in the stable defines and contains the values for the attributes as follows. Department number, which is the primary key containing the department numbers used to identify each department. 
Department name. The name of each department. Location. The location where each department is based. The basic form of the SQL select statement. SQL queries can be written in upper or lower case and on one or more lines. All queries in SQL begin with the word select. The most basic form of the select statement is as follows. Select, select list, from table list. It is often useful to separate the different parts of a query onto different lines, so we might write this again as select, select list, from table list. Following the select keyword is the list of data items that the user wishes to view. This list is known as the select list. As well as listing the table columns to be retrieved by the query, the select list can also contain various SQL functions to process the data, for example carry out calculations on it. The select list can also be used to specify headings to be displayed above the data values retrieved by the query. Multiple select list items are separated from each other with commas. The from keyword is, like the select keyword, mandatory. It effectively terminates the select list and is followed by the list of tables to be used by the query to retrieve data. This list is known as the table list. The fact that the tables need to be specified in the table list means that, in order to retrieve data in SQL, you do need to know in which table S data items are stored. This may not seem surprising from the perspective of a programmer or database developer, but what about an end user? SQL has, in some circles, been put forward as a language that can be learned and used effectively by business users. We can see even at this early stage, however, that knowledge of what data is stored where, at least at the logical level, is fundamental to the effective use of the language. The name of all employees. Suppose we wish to list the names of all employees, the SQL query would be select employee name from employee. The single employee name column we wish to see is the only entry in the select list in this example. The employee names are stored in the employee table, and so the employee table must be put after the keyword from to identify from where the employee names are to be fetched. Note that the SQL statement is terminated with a semicolon. This is not strictly part of the SQL standard. However, in the Oracle environment, it ensures that the system runs the query after it has been entered. The result of this query, when executed, is as followed. All data from department table. There are two usual ways to list all data in a table. The simplest is to use a shorthand notation provided in SQL to list all the columns in any table. This is done simply by specifying an asterisk for the select list as follows. Select asterisk from department. The asterisk is called the wild card and causes all attributes of the specified TABL -E, to be retrieved by the query. Note that, as it is the details of the department table we wish to view, it is the department table, this time, that appears in the table list following the from keyword. The use of asterisk in this way is a very easy way to view the entire contents of any table. The alternative approach is simply to list all of the columns of the department table in the select list as follows. Select department number, department name, lock ocean from department. The result of executing either of these queries on our department table at this time is the following. A potential problem of using the asterisk wildcard instead of explicitly listing all the attributes we want is that the behavior of the query will change if the table structure is altered. For example, if we add new attributes to the department table, the select asterisk version of the query will then list the new attributes. This is a strong motivation for avoiding the use of the asterisk wildcard in most situations. The salary and commission of all employees. If we wish to see details of each employee's salary and commission, we would use the following query that specifies just those attributes we desire. 
Select Employee Number Employee Name Salary Commission From Employee In this example, we have included the Employee Number column, just in case we had any duplicate names amongst the employees. The result of this query is Example Calculation on a Select List in the queries we have presented so far, the data we have requested has been one or more attributes present in each record. Following the principle of reducing data redundancy, many pieces of information that are useful and that can be calculated from other stored data are not stored explicitly in databases. SQL queries can perform a calculation on the fly, using data from table records, to present this kind of information. The salary and commission values of employees, we shall assume to be monthly. Suppose we wish to display the total annual income, including commission for each employee. This figure for each employee is not stored in the table, since it can be calculated from the monthly salary and commission values. The calculation is simply 12 times the sum of the monthly salary and commission. A query that retrieves the number and name of each employee and calculates their annual income is as follows. Select Employee Number, Employee Name, 12 times Salary, plus Commission, from Employee. The calculation here adds the monthly commission to the salary and then multiplies the result by 12 to obtain the total annual income. Notice that only records for which the commission value was not null have been included. This issue is discussion later in the unit. Depending on which SQL system you run, a query like this, the calculated column may or may not have a heading. The column heading may be the expression itself, 12 times salary, plus commission, or may be something indicating that an expression has been calculated, expr1004. These two examples are what happens in Oracle and Microsoft Access respectively. Since such calculations usually mean something in particular, in this case total annual income, it makes sense to name these calculated columns sensibly wherever possible. Altering the column headings of query results Sometimes it is desirable to improve upon the default column headings for query results applied by the system in order to make the results of queries more intelligible. For example, the result of a query to calculate annual pay by summing the monthly salary and commission and multiplying by 12 would by default in Oracle have the expression of the calculation as the column heading. The result is more readable, however, if we supply a heading which clearly states what the compound value actually is, that is, annual income. To do this, simply include the required header information in double quotes after the column specification in the select list. For the annual pay example, this would be Select Employee Number Employee Name 12 times Salary plus Commission Annual Income From Employee The result is more meaningful. To achieve the naming of columns in Microsoft Access, rather than using the double quotation marks around the column heading, the use of the as keyword and square brackets is required. The WHERE clause Very often we wish to filter the records retrieved by a query. That is, we may only wish to have a subset of the records of a table returned to us by a query. The reason for this may be, for example, in order to restrict the employees shown in a query result just to those employee with a particular job or with a particular salary range etc. Filtering of records is achieved in SQL through the use of the WHERE clause. In effect, the WHERE clause implements the functionality of the restrict operator from relational algebra in that it takes a horizontal subset of the data over which the query is expressed. Basic syntax of the WHERE clause The WHERE clause is not mandatory, but when it is used, it must appear following the table list in an SQL statement. The clause consists of the keyword where, followed by one or more restriction conditions, each of which are separated from one another using the keywords and or or. The format of the basic SQL statement, including a where clause, is therefore select select list from table list where condition one 
and slash or condition to condition in. The number of conditions that can be included with an AWARE clause varies from DBMS to DBMS, though in most major commercial DBMS, such as Oracle, Sybase, DB2, etc. In practice, the limit is so high that it poses no practical restriction on query specifications. We can also use parentheses and an S conditions or improve legability. The use of not. The keyword not can be used to negate a condition, that is, only records that do not meet a condition are selected. An example might be to list all employees who are not salesmen. Select employee number, employee name, job, salary. From employee. Where not, job, equal salesman. The use of not equal. The operator not equal can be used to select where some value is not equal to some other value. So, 